July 15th, 2019, I published a video detailing whether or not Batman could figure out the Kira case and defeat Light Yagami at his own game. Batman being one of the most famous detective characters of all time, hailing from a long and titanic comic series, with Light Yagami being one of the most famous criminal characters of all time, hailing from a widely popular manga series. The comparison was bound to happen eventually, and many people were very satisfied with my conclusions in that video. So for this one, I wanted to sort of flip it around, with that comic comic series main criminal, Joker, facing that manga series main detective, L. Joker is the most dangerous and unpredictable cat and mouse antag in almost all of fiction, with L. Lolliet, the super detective, being more of a grounded and realistic story in Death Note, well, realistic. And considering my conclusions in Batman vs. Kira and how almost one-sided it was, surely L wouldn't really stand a chance. Right, this is a question I had to ask myself genuinely before writing this video myself. And the answer is yes, L could in fact do something to the Joker and vice versa, depending on certain factors. And I'm very pleased with the conclusion. So let's get into it. In this hypothetical, L from Death Note will be taking the place of Bruce Wayne as the super detective of the DC world. This is easier as the Joker's origin sort of needs to take place, particularly in DC. And L doesn't actually have any home base of no except the Whammy's house. Even that building he made in Death Note, he literally just made it for Kira. We'll place Whammy's house right where it is in Death Note, so the orphanage would be plopped in DC Winchester, England, and the Joker's origin taking place in Gotham, just like usual. The win and lose conditions are as follows. Neither L or the Joker are allowed to kill each other, at least until their true identity is exposed. This may seem as though I'm giving the Joker an advantage, as the Joker obviously has way more kill potential than L does. However, if L and Joker are actually remotely interested in the other, which they probably would be, they would play a battle of pride or a game with each other. The Joker, from what we know of, more often than not, doesn't kill Batman on purpose in many issues and stories, just like how the Batman would never kill the Joker. Likewise, L wouldn't kill Joker either, as he wants to solve cases, not stop them from happening. Light notes this in the manga as something near L's successor may not follow very specifically and he actually is somewhat scared about it. So I think this is a pretty in-character condition for both to follow. L's win condition is to either find the Joker's identity and then have him executed or locked away. And the Joker's win condition is make L admit defeat. Joker can do this in a multitude of ways, either making his true identity impossible to determine always outsmarting L and or blatantly destroying L's reputation to the point he no longer even has any authority to come after Joker and so forth. Nier admitted defeat in the Death Note Extra chapters as an example and while he wasn't fully serious or committed to the case it is definitely possible, especially for the Joker which I'll go over soon. L being forced to have the Joker executed without his identity being revealed may also be a loss as well to a certain extent. I'd say L would at least consider it somewhat a loss even if the public or police doesn't. In the B.B. Murder Cases novel by Nisio Isin, we see a similar situation where a murderer named Beyond Birthday was going to kill himself after committing a string of murders by lighting himself on fire. L and Beyond Birthday both consider this as L's loss if it were to happen, as L could never prove B.B. committed the crimes after L accepted the case and said he'd solve it. The Joker could go about beating L in many similar ways without ever needing to kill him personally, and we will be using the main canon for Joker, most particularly his killing joke interpretation, as the killing joke is noted as the main Joker story, with the man who laughs being considered the main Joker origin story at the time most people recommended to me, with L just being L. The Joker over all his years has never been identified by literally anybody, not by Batman, extra-dimensional minds, Superman, and people smarter than the entire human race put together times a billion. So how would L ever, ever be able to figure out the Joker's identity? The answer, it depends on the time and the place. In this hypothetical, L would have been on his detective shtick before the Joker was even the Joker, just like Batman was. And just like how Batman is vulnerable due to his life outside of being the Batman, Joker was as well at a certain point in time. The Joker originally was a man who worked for a chemical laboratory and then quit to try to become a comedian, failing miserably. His wife was pregnant with his child and he needed money badly. He goes to seek help from shady folks, they promise they'll get him some cash if they help him break into his old work, and then use his work as a way to get into the business next door. All he has to do is show them the way through the place and wear a red hood to conceal his identity. Seems shady, but simple, and his old work didn't even have any security in it so it might as well be free money. Right as they're about to sign the deal and get the show on the road that night, officers come in the bar and confront our soon-to-be 
Joker with a picture of his wife, and apparently she dies in a freak and extremely unbelievably rare accident. Tough luck, and while he goes insane, the mobsters aren't having it. He's got to escort them through the old chemical plant or else. So later on, he puts the red hood on, meets the mobsters, goes down the old path he used to walk as an employee. They go up the stairs and get in through the plant's door without a hitch. Don't even have to break in. Unfortunately for the trio, the joint got security ever since our comedian stopped working there. They get on him and the police come and take down the two mobsters while Red Hood bolts for it being chased by police. And in this instance, Batman comes and chases Joker even further, but L would not. L would send proxies to intercept Red Hood for him rather than chase him down himself. Either way, Red Hood is running off and getting chased in the chemical waste like usual. El would more than likely be able to catch on to this if he was actually hunting Red Hood, as the police actually arrived before Batman here, implying that Batman probably was just listening to police comms to catch on to this. The mobsters are also nobody notably intelligent outside of just creating a hooded anonymous goon for their task, so El would probably catch on to this as well. As in Batman vs. Kira, El is a super genius, smarter than multiple detective bureaus and agencies put together. So if some cops could get on it, Al could get on it. One difference that may happen here though is if L did send someone to actually come for Red Hood himself, he may send a helicopter to actually chase him down in advance. In which case, when the comedian just jumps into the toxic river and swims off, L may actually just have someone follow him with a helicopter and then catch him on the spot when he leaves the river, just as he uses helicopters to chase the Yotsubakira and keeps tabs on him. However, this would mean the Joker would never exist or he would spawn in jail and it would sort of muddy the premise of this video. So for the sake in this video, L doesn't send a helicopter in advance or Red Hood is able to escape from it somehow and then becomes the Joker later. One thing to know about Batman early on is that he's a bit different than he is later. Early on, and even Batman himself admits this, is only prepared for the likes of normal criminals and the mob. Someone like the Joker completely catches him off guard early in his career and that's why he's become so much more advanced to prepare for more people like him in the future. In L's case, he would be more on the ball by the time Red Hood jumped in the river, which is why he he may have blocked off all exits in advance, even way back earlier in his career. Remember, even as an eight-year-old, L was stopping World War III by himself and doing things no organization on the planet could solve. So yeah, it's pretty within his ability even early on, unlike Batman potentially, when he's still just known as the human bat, not even Batman. From here, L would more than likely try to figure out Red Hood's identity if he even cared enough to try and find Red Hood to begin with. In the novels, L is only known as going on cases with at least 10 victims or a million dollars on the line or a certain X factor he decides. If Red Hood steals millions of dollars, L for sure would get on it, but he may get on it due to how interesting it is anyway, potentially, but he also may not due to how unimpressive the mobsters are that create Red Hood. We also don't know how much money they've taken or if they've actually killed 10 people by this point, at least before the Joker becomes Red Hood. They're stupid enough to walk with their own guy through the plant themselves rather than just send goons after all, so L may never be impressed enough. But if he were, this is a big moment in finding out the Joker's identity or not. The Red Hood, as even sharp members of the police or even detectives in general noted, were not always the same guy and seemed to be a somewhat different person every time, at least before the birth of Joker, obviously. L2 would more than likely deduce this fact as the Red Hood gang and of course the mobsters were not really all that intelligent nor were they superhuman or something like that. They just put a hood on a guy that suited their needs and had to go do a crime. But what's the significance? Why does that help us find out Joker's identity? Well, if these mobsters choose a different Red Hood guy every time and they sneak into this chemical lab with only one guy masked, wouldn't it be kind of suspicious? Not only that, but they were not expecting security either. This tells us a few things. They chose this Red Hood for a specific reason and knew how to sneak in and took even an employee path. Two, only one guy needed to be disguised. Three, they didn't know security was present. And I've asked many people their thoughts on this, and I'm sure even people on the internet would suspect this at a certain point, and trust me, L definitely would, that this Red Hood was more than likely either an employee or ex-employee of the company, just based on those details alone. That is a completely rational deduction, and many people even in real life would make it. If that deduction is in fact made, then they would further deduce that they probably used to work there when security wasn't as 
as prevalent, as they clearly wanted to sneak through and not say blast through the plant as they didn't even break down the door from what we know. So from here, Elle is probably going to be highly suspicious of some white collar crime. He'd probably drop his famous, maybe 10%. No, it's closer to 5%. To the police, when he really just means 91% or et cetera, et cetera, typical L line. But how does he pinpoint the comedian's identity from that? Surely there's a lot of employees or ex-employees. Well, the way L goes about finding out these sorts of things, I'm not joking, is straight up illegal. Like he will go to any length to find this question out. And I'm not exaggerating when I say this man L may straight up sick an FBI watchdog or probe on every single employee and ex-employee in the personnel file of the facility. Also, yes, personnel files and records of the plant actually exist and were only destroyed after the plant was closed down by EPA later, meaning if L is on the ball, he would be. He's getting those files and he's stalking and looking into all of them. Remember, L has complete control over Interpol and pretty much every police organization on the planet, as many of the novels quote and is very shown in the series. Now, obviously, the comedian would be a prime suspect as his family died, he needed a lot of money tried to be a comedian and was seen by these mobsters in a bar literally right before the situation happened. And last but not least, he's also the only person on that file list that just so happens to completely vanish from existence right after that night. Yeah, L would know this Red Hood's name, and in fact, many people in real life may be able to figure it out as well. In some versions of Batman, such as the three Jokers, even Batman says he knew who Joker was a week after meeting him. Although that's more than likely not canon, you get the idea. So why does nobody ever find out the Joker's identity if it's that simple? A anime YouTuber apparently can figure it out, especially if they later deduce the Red Hood is Joker. Well, the reason is that Batman was very early in his career and not as on the ball as he is later when Joker appears. By the time Joker's on the ball, the Joker's identity in those files is already long gone. And like I said, in some versions, Batman straight up knows Joker's identity. It's just that he thinks it doesn't matter. Anyway, after this, the Joker is caught a few times. Even one time he is caught by getting beat up and tied by a normal farmer boy and leaves hairs on crime scenes and so forth to be analyzed. And while his DNA is not notable, it would be just like what happens in the main story, only a matter of time until you connect the dots that Red Hood was washed out by chemicals in that river and turned into a ghoulish Joker man. Even some police officers are already somewhat suspicious of this early on, let alone after a long history of the Joker is known in asylums and so forth. He is also built pretty much like the missing employee in Last Red Hood as well, except for his face and skin, etc. In this instance, eventually the Joker is going to allow himself to get caught or mess up eventually, and L would connect the dots and it'd be game over, with not a lot of counterplay as L usually plays completely anonymously. You have to remember throughout the main Death Note series, the only reason L ever appears in public is because he has to, so that Kira will also show himself as well. The Joker will show himself on his own merit, so L doesn't need to expose himself in that way. Light Yagami also pressures L to show himself to the police or the police are going to turn on him. In this case, early in Joker's career, he's not as interested in that. And even with Batman, he sort of has to get introduced to him a few times. Remember that while Joker is also strong enough to fight Batman, sometimes due to his insanity, as guidebooks suggest, most of the time he's just sort of peak athlete. And his weakness is his desire to sometimes get caught and have the game continue to mess with people. The Joker would probably eventually be up headcanon and all that aside, probably by his own will. And unlike Batman, L might not spare Joker if he ever gets a win over him or finds him out. But that's only if L is interested ever since Red Hood. Even then, there are canonically three Jokers. Not one. Elle would more than likely catch on to the fact there are three Jokers, or at least it assumes so at one point. And remember with Kira, he immediately knew there was a new one just based on minor differences in their crimes and psychology. So L would more than likely deduce there are multiple Jokers or the Joker's personality causes him to act three different ways. However, I will say this straight up. All we know for certain is that he could more than likely identify the killing joke comedian Joker. The other two are straight up our anomalous he may never figure out, although they aren't impossible to imprison or whatever. Examples being, once again, how the original Joker from the old Red Hood comics gets caught and tied up by a pretty normal dude. And sometimes the police even surround and pressured the Jokers alone. However, he's only catching on to the killing joke Joker if he's onto the Red Hood since the start. And it's a very particular set of events that need to happen for it to be the case. And we don't even know if he would. And if he's not on the case, 
then this is going to get very crazy. As I said before, early Batman was not as on the ball, and neither was actually the Joker, really. But late game, they turned into some serious monsters. If L wasn't on Joker's tail since Red Hood before EPA closed down the chemical plant, then I'll be straight up honest, just like every other hero and intellect in the multiverse couldn't, Al would never defeat the Joker, period. The Joker becomes so absolutely batshit and intelligent that he straight up manipulates an extra dimensional entity known as Mr. Mixie into giving him 99% of his powers. This extra dimensional imp is smart enough to require a thought from Superman to combat whenever he appears, with the man of tomorrow having to think of all the new ways to trick the fifth dimensional being pretty much every time he appears. With Superman having a super mind it being shown reading pretty much every medical book on earth and being a certified surgeon in seconds, and having the mental capacity capacity to sense almost the entire planet at once and, can, and comprehend all actions on it almost simultaneously. He was even able to memorize the design of a reality-altering imagination machine from the 31st century with a glance. Now compare that to L's intelligence being hyped up in say Death Note How to Read for being able to comprehend a few monitors at once. Joker is also able to predict Batman's tactics and evolves to a point that he becomes completely unpredictable to not only Batman but even the Batman who laughs. With Batman Batman having the ability to, and I'm not even joking, predict a person appearing from the literal future and where he would appear. Yeah, Joker is harder to predict than that. No way L is ever predicting probably a single thing he does late game. His mind is so unnatural that Martian Manhunter, someone capable of scanning every mind on the planet at once, referred to Joker's mind as a raging river and could only temporarily suppress his insanity and that's being modest. Joker even outwits the entire Justice League and Jokerizes all of them to mess with Batman, with Superman actively listening to events around the globe at all times, being outmaneuvered and infected by Joker. Somehow. I, I legit don't know how he did this. I, no, nobody knows. It's just insane. Considering Batman has plans to stop the Justice League and Joker is considered a rival intellect, that makes sense. Even Batman, who could almost read minds by sensing your breath and your pulse, can't even read a single damn thing about Joker. But Seth, if Joker is so intelligent, why does he get caught all the time? The answer is because it's a joke. The Joker wants to prove a point to many people and doesn't interpret things the same way we do. Him getting caught is almost like him finishing a big show most of the time. And while early on, such as in Man Who Laughs, he seemed genuinely baffled that Batman stopped his plan to contaminate Gotham, there's another side that seems to say he sort of led Batman to stopping himself, almost as if he nerfs himself and gives it away on purpose. He as well considers Batman a type of ally in his own warped way, thinking that all the gruesome tragedies he puts him through will only make him stronger and better off for it. In his fight against L, he would pick on L, Jokerize Whammy's house more than likely to turning on him, kill Watsuri, and probably completely shatters El Resolve or bully El for the rest of his career while remaining a completely psycho clown man that was utterly anonymous. With the only way El would ever find out a late game Joker's identity is if he connected the dots that a Red Hood employee went missing and a family with a man that used to work there is gone since that day. But the honest truth? Not even the Joker knows if that's actually his backstory or not, so. How could I ever tell you? Special thanks to my editor, Crisis. He gave me a lot of help with Joker research, and it was a big help with this video. And you should check out his stuff. He also has a Batman and Joker video on his channel, so be sure to give him a view or two. And other than that, if you guys want to see more, if you have any other suggestions on this type of topic or style of video, let me know. And thank you for watching.